or by another method that I'm not going to talk about in this video, and just fill them in by hand. So that's a bit, like, slow. Like, it, it's taking me much longer t to recreate the faces than just use the delete edge loop. So it's a very, very useful feature. One to keep in mind and try to remember the uh, shortcuts and things. So yeah, next up is our last tool for part one, subdivide. So uh, let's go explore subdivide. So subdivide is the last part in part one. Uh, basically what subdivide does is that it takes your mesh and basically divides it into the number of cuts you want to make. So to uh, to use subdivide, you can either go into the menu here, and I'm sure I saw it. Oh, there it is, uh, subdivide, or you can go into the specials menu using W, and you can u choose subdivide. So let's just use this button here, and immediately you can see that these edges has been have been split in two, and therefore each face now has twice as many edges, so therefore it faces. So that can be useful sometimes, but uh, the real trick to this is the number of cuts. Now in 2.49, which loads up a lot faster than 2.3, uh, 2.53, uh, when you subdivide, you either have subdivide or subdivide multi. Now subdivide basically j does what I just did, one subdivision. But you also have subdivide multi. Now you can choose a number of cuts you want to make. So in this case two, you would get the same effect as if you had used two loop cuts on either uh, axis, or actually either face. But in 2.5, the number of cuts is actually accessible through the F6 menu right after subdivision. You can change the number of cuts here, the smoothness, and the fractal. Uh, but you can also just change it through the tool, pa tool panel. So let's move this up. And right now if you have three subdivisions, you have one subdivision every 0.5 units. So now you have all these little squares on every face, instead of having to do uh, loop cuts on every side, like this. So it's just faster to use subdivide. However, uh, you cannot... Oops, Let's add a new cube. Say you only subdivide this face. So subdivide. It creates all these triangles here because it tries to split only this face and not the rest. So you end up with five vertices on this face here. So it creates triangles to try and keep everything consistent. However, th this will disappear with B-mesh. Uh, B-mesh, you'll be able to make more than four sides per face, so once you subdivide that, it will turn into a five-sided face. Uh, I haven't actually tried B-mesh, but from what I know, that's what it's supposed to do. So subdivide is another very useful tool. I don't use it as much as um, loop cut, but it's very useful when working from a plane, because a plane basically doesn't have anything else to worry about, so you can Oops, not subdivide, smooth, subdivide. You can basically just turn it up as much as you want and get as many subdivisions as you want, as long as you turn it up properly. But uh, obviously that is not the right setting. There, that's the right setting, but maximum is 10. And if you subdiv subdivide it again, you get one every unit. So that's fairly useful, but uh, I still prefer loop cut because subdivide I haven't really used much in a while. I prefer loop cut. My, my methods of modeling have changed. But uh, yeah, that's it. This is part one. In part two we're going to be going over uh, some slightly more advanced tools such as, let me just grab my list here, such as split, duplicate, recalculate normals, separate, invert selection, stuff like that. So yeah. This is the end of part one, and on to part two. So in part two, we're going to be going over some maybe 
slightly more advanced uh, tools. And we're going to start with split and duplicate. Now I'm not exactly sure which one I'll do first, but probably duplicate because it's a very very useful and uh, a feature that I use very often. So we'll start with duplicate and then move along to split, so, um, recalculate normals, hide unhide, select connected, separate, mirror, and invert selection. So that's the uh, eight tools that we're going to be covering in part two. So let's get started. So uh, first on our list is duplicate. Now duplicate is exactly what it sounds like. It, you can duplicate objects, part of objects, uh, lamps, anything. So the main shortcut for duplicate is shift D. Now you can also access duplicate through the tool panel, the T panel here, in under object, it's the first button, duplicate, and let's just click this, and it creates a duplicate that can immediately move. And you can also move this the same way as you're moving stuff with grab, by locking the axis and stuff like that. Now this also works in edit mode, say you select this face, shift D, and move it along the x-axis, so press X, you can immediately move it. So immediately you can see that duplicate is very simple, but still quite a powerful tool because you can use it for a lot of things. And right now I'm filling in faces of between my main mesh and the one I duplicated. So of course that's easier to do with extrude, but bleh. So duplicate, there's also another way that you can duplicate things because this is just standard duplication, which is Shift D. Now, say you go uh, into object mode, add a lamp, so Shift A, add lamp, spot. Now, right now it's pointing right down, so just move it up a bit using GZ, and Shift select your uh, cube so that it stays, everything stays selected. Then press Control T to add a track to constraint. Now, what this does is that it takes the lamp and makes it uh, copy or actually point always towards the cube. Now the reason I'm doing this is that uh, there's another way of duplicating things and that is called a linked duplicate. Now to do this you use alternate D so it creates a, an identical copy of the, the other object however it also uh, shares the same data. So instead of creating an independent copy like this would do by shift D it also creates uh, it creates a linked copy that which uses the same data so if I modify this one the other one changes if I modify its intensity its color its uh, specularity the ray shadows everything everything stays the same in all lamps so that's a very very useful feature especially when setting up a uh, lighting lighting scene so, like, if you have fill lighting with three spot lamps and you want them to be all the same intensity, you can just link duplicate them and just modify one. So it can save a lot of time. So next on our list is split. Now, to demonstrate this properly, uh, I would suggest doing a two-cut subdivision. So W, subdivide, and move, bring up the cuts two and select this these top four vertices here and now split is kind of like duplicate except that it doesn't actually duplicate it just splits off but at first glance it might seem like a duplicate so press Y to activate split you can also uh, activate it in here I think nope Okay, I thought it was in here, but it seems like it's not. Just press Y to activate split, and immediately you can see that something has changed, except I just, there. Uh, before the split, you had these or orange to black gradients from the selected vertex to unselected. And that meant it was still connected, because the gradient means it, it's showing you where the other connection is. So as, as soon as you split, as you split it off, you can see that the gradient disappears. 